So I saw this monthly challenge on another website for a different CAD application and I thought let's take a look at that and see one or two ways of how we would create this in NX. So here's the, the part that I'm going to create. And let's start by setting up our material properties. I'm going to use a material thickness of 2 as specified. I don't need relief, depth and a bend radius of 2, so 1 times the material thickness and I'm not using relief width either. My bend definition method I'm going to leave at the default at 0.33 and we're ready to start. So I'm going to create the form first and I'm going to do that with a contour flange by sketching on a plane. I can do profile or just click the Z key and generate the main shape. Put some numbers on here now. This is going to be 60. Uh, let's get it down to scale. There we go. And we're going to pick up on the end point of these two curves. And this is 84. I'm going to make these two symmetric about the center line by picking the two, the center line, and hitting the S key. And then I'm going to dimension from the outer two edges, and this is going to be a hundred. Finally, I'm going to make this and this curve. Let me select those again. This curve and this curve of equal length. Finally, the height. And this is going to be 30. So there's our sketch. Our contour flange will be of a symmetric type because I'm working off the center line and the width according to the drawing here is 50. So here's our basic part, pretty well much complete. Let's add the, the fixing lugs. For this, I'm going to sketch again. I'm just going to pick up on the, the main sketch plane here. And so I'm going to create a circle and include the edge of the part into the sketch. Pick up on that reference. And the hole is diameter 5. And I'm going to put another one on there and grab it and dimension it. And that's going to be 2 times 4.5 radius, which is 9. And then all I need to do now is pick the center, the center, and that's 12.5. That's all I need to do. Because what secondary tab is going to do for me is add and remove material appropriately based on the number of curves that I've generated. And there we have it. Could have sketched all four, or just two and mirrored, but here I'm just going to mirror that feature around the center line in one direction, and mirror those two features around the center line across. And there's our basic shape. Now for the slots, the way they're dimensioned, 10 across the top face and 10 down, based on this center point, we can just do a straight normal cutout through, but then the depth would need to be calculated according to the, the 10 that's going down at the angle. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to unbend the part. I'm going to create my normal cutout. Again, I'm using datums and coordinate systems as the parent for all of my sketches. It just makes for more robust modeling. I'm going to create one of these, dimension it from the center line of 20. As we know, the part 60 to the corner of the point. We want this to be 20. We want this to be 10. And we want this to be centered. Which I believe it already is. There we go. 
Now again, I can mirror this as a feature, or I can use the mirror curves within Sketch. Select my center line and create both of these. Now, as far as persistent relations are concerned, I can turn this on such that if I have any changes, then they will get updated. So I'll turn those on and we have my two sketches. Let's finish that. Define the direction of the normal cutout. I'm saying through all and they have both been created in the correct place. And then finally, let's rebend the part. Control A just picks everything. Now, let's scoot back to the very first feature. Because if we look carefully at the sketch that I created and the size that we have here, my direction of thickness is down and it should be up. So I'm just going to flip that and correct the design. Quite easy to do, no issues. So finally, we've got a, a two millimeter blend on all of these sharp corners. So I'm gonna use the break corner command, set to blend to control A, picks everything in the part, and there we have our part finished. We can create a flat pattern or a flat solid. Let's do the flat pattern and have a look at that with our parameters and just a little tip here if you want to see the 3d version of the flat you don't need to create a flat solid feature separately you can just make the flat solid external and there it is directly in the part and that's my method for creating this part uh, following this will be another sped up version where I choose a slightly different method for creation have fun watching.